when that happens, that's when people start to get excess parasite buildup and they start to get ex excess mold buildup. And I'll, I often think that the amount of strep and staph should just naturally push through the colon, should be able to have your bowel movements. But I always ask the patient, please think back to a former time in life, like an earlier time in life when you were controlled or you felt like you didn't have control of your life and things were out of control. Mm. And that's going to cause you to go into sympathetic tone. When you find that out, in my opinion, I do like different emotional techniques, but I always go to the lower base of the spine at the L5 and sacrum. And they're always going to have low back pain because the nerve that goes to the colon is going to be lit up. Dr. Motley, my friend, welcome to the pod. How you doing? Dr. Will Cole, brother, thank you so much for having me on this uh, great podcast. I really, truly thank you for it. It's a privilege, man. Thank you so much. It's good to see your face. Likewise, you man. You, man. Likewise. I was on your podcast with the amazing co-host you have. What was her name again? I'm forgetting it. Courtney. Courtney, Courtney. Versich. Yep. Hi, Courtney. Mm -hmm. Hi, Courtney. Sorry. I'm great with faces, not good with names all the time. I need to get better <laughs> at that. Um, but you guys, it was such a good time. Um, and whenever I'm in Nashville, I will see you at the Air One of Nashville, otherwise known as Urban Market. That's how yeah. I think it is. It, and it walk in, and invariably, you'll be there. You'll be there. I'll, we'll run into each other. Um, it, it is crazy how much we we see each other there. You're right. <laughs> uh, and I, uh, I mean, that place is amazing, right? I mean, if anybody's in the Nashville area, Franklin specifically. Um, how would you describe an urban market? Urban markets, like, is it like the people that do the Mecca journeys or the people who do pilgrimages? Yeah. I think there are people that come to urban market, Matt and Ashley, shout out, that literally people fly and drive into this market and it's an organic market. So one side has like produce, organic material, like you can find toothpaste that's made out of the most organic material, but then on the other side, Dr. Will knows like you get over there and it's got like the best pancakes you ever had. Like <laughs> we've, okay. I, I know maybe you didn't uh, brother, but I ate like McDonald's pancakes when I was a kid and I, I loved them, but I hadn't eaten them so long. But when I had their pancakes and the organic, they taste like so good like that. And I'm like, you can make a pancake taste like I would like I had when I was a kid. And now everybody comes in there. I mean, I literally, I think that I see more, you know, country music and uh, stars and entertainers in this area there and yeah. they're all bringing their kids. So anybody out there, yeah. if you want to see me, uh, you know, eat lots of pancakes, just show up. <laughs> I, you know, the tribe is strong there. When I'm, when I'm at Urban Market uh, every time some sweet person will come up and say, Hey, Dr. Will Cole, I love what you're doing. I can go anywhere else. No one's going to care who the heck I am. But when I'm at <laughs> Urban Market or Whole Foods or Air One, it's, it's like the tribe. The, 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 uh... Oh, man. Did you notice like whenever, um, like when you're there or Dr. Josh X, like our buddy, he's when he's there, it's funny because they'll come by and people will be looking at you like when you're there and they're like, and they're like, some want to say hello. Some are kind of shy and you're like, do I go say hello? Know, and you're like, right. you know, it's it's a it's a really cool thing because this area, though, um, has really become, like you say, a big magnet for people who are in natural health. Um, yeah. In the, back in the past, I've been here about 20 years and it's just grown like more and more people are there. And this everybody loves this place. But I'm so glad because they recognize when they see great information and when they yeah. see you, they're like, um, they see you in there and they know that they get honest, true information. And so people around here appreciate that. So yeah. that I'm thankful for, brother, that you're putting out the good news. Oh, man. Likewise. Likewise. And what I mean, by the way, everybody, this is not sponsored by Urban Market. I just am just saying this is real, <laughs> real talk. And I don't, I don't get to talk about it with many guests. But what what's your order when you go there? What do you what do you get? Um, Mostly I will get. They do the burger, but I'll get like the burger patty and I'll get the burger patty. I'll do sometimes I'll do a bun, mostly like a gluten free bun. And then I'll get they'll have a sweet potato hash now. I'll do that. And I'll get a fried egg on top of that. Um, and sometimes I'll have like different vegetable medleys uh, that I put together. If I feel real spunky, brother, I will do. <laughs> let's see. I will have breakfast in the afternoon or evening. I'm one of those guys that does Brenner. 
And so I'll, I'll try to make myself eat pretty much something like that. And I'll, I'm weird like that. I'll add like a pancake can. So give me a single pancake. <laughs> I've always been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. I eat, I eat weird food combinations. It's probably that's why I had such bad food stomach problems when I was a kid. So. What, uh, what, um, what flour do they use for the pancakes? Um, they use a banana. I think they use a little bit of cassava at okay. times. And I think, I don't think they put a lot of almond in it, but that was the last time. And I think they use a little bit, um, some uh, arrow root too so okay, i don't think cool. they use too much of that but the new chef over there billy he was telling me that he was raised on making your spices your food and making that what we need and so he did that and the cool thing about it though is that he's always trying to invent something with different spices to actually nourish you with Very it cool. so it's really great yeah like, um their, their new progress over there. And maybe, maybe everybody that's into health and health foods and things that are up and coming, maybe everybody's interested in this. I think they are. I, I know the listeners that listen to the pod are very fascinated by this right now. Their mouths are watering, but the, uh, I think there's an extra fascination with me because I live in a small country town in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. And it's like, when I go to something like that, it's where the, where a company takes the, the thoughtfulness to build something like that. Uh, as mm. as small business owners and really build something really awesome, uh, it's so special because you go around the country. It's not like that. It's definitely not like that here in the in the Rust Belt. You have you have something special. So don't take it for granted, Doctor Motley. <laughs> I will not take it for granted. I mean, the first time that they came over, I know we're talking about urban market, but you're right about taking things for granted and the small yeah. things in life. Yeah. But I remember when they say they're going to start it, and Whole Foods is not too far from where I'm at. And I literally thought that when they were going to build it, I was like, well, who's going to go to a small market? But then one of my good friends, Justin, went over there to, to work and I went over there and I was like, this is going to do really well because people started flooding in because it's that it's the community, it's camaraderie yeah. that people want. Oh, yeah, it's totally different. I mean, it's like you're going to a little cafe, which is you cannot get that when you're going to talk about some massive not cor at all. corporation. Not at all. You get a, I mean, think about it. You get you can get like a you can get a great thing of like again, like toothpaste and maybe some macadamia and nut milk and then get a great latte all in the same line. <laughs> well, do that. Like, and I love, uh, and they have, their menu is amazing, right? I mean, it's way, way, way better than Air One. So for everybody that's into health and wellness, you go to LA, Air One's like the, whatever, like the creme de la creme, the pièce de résistance of like all the cliches of wellness. But mm -hmm. I will say this, and I love Air One. I can go there and appreciate for what it is. I've met the found the owners of, of air one so no shade to them but i think what, what urban market they're making it more mainstream like for the average person it's not like so unattainable because you just go in there and there's like tons just normal families uh eating mm -hmm. and shopping at our market uh, have you been to air one before i have not been to air one i've heard about it but i've never been there what's it like brother oh man it is like well, you, you see all the videos on social media where they're making fun of wellness and like the $50 smoothies or something like that. And the, but it, I love Air One. I can appreciate it for what it is. And mm -hmm. I was talking to the team at Air One. They said, yeah, it's not the point of Air One for most people. It's not to go actually with a, a, a go as a grocery shopping haul and get all of your, your basics there. It's to get these very niche items that, and they are, they're beautifully curated that you, you're getting the best of the best in those areas. It's very thoughtful and they have mm -hmm. very unique things on the menu. Uh, it's, it's very cool. I love it. And they sell Holy Main there, which I developed with Agent Natura. And it's like the, I've been told, um, this isn't my words, people don't throw shade at me. The, they kind of the, every hot girl in LA is like put, be using Holy Main for their hair and their skin, and their nails. It's a supplement. <laughs> and, uh, so I love Air One. I, I, I love it. Um, but I, I, Urban Market's like the Nashville version of, of that in many ways. Um, so it's Air One. So you're A I R One. No, no. Air One. E R E W H O O N. Air One. You know what? My friend Amanda told me about that out there. Yes. And yeah. I was like, I've heard about that's exactly right. Because yeah. like, that's where she said she always got some really good like juices. Like, oh, yeah. You know, okay, niche. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's just very, yeah. it's also very, very LA, which is not Nashville. So uh, it is, uh, it's a whole different experience, but I can appreciate them both. You did not come here to talk about my favorite uh, health food store. Dude, I love together. talking like this. I don't get to talk to you hardly <laughs> at all. I mean, you're, you're so busy. I'm so busy. We're, I think people appreciate this good combo. I love it, man. I love it. So you have these amazing, uh, blue light blocking glasses. Those, those are where, where are they from? I love them. RA optics. Um, and, oh. uh, uh, Matt, my good buddy, uh, I have, Matt that's at RA optics. That's what mine is. Yeah. 
Rob. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's like um, he uh, he told he we did a podcast with him about a, t- a year or two ago, and he just said, "Hey, I think you would have like these frames." And um, I was like, sure. So when he sent them, brother, I was like, when I put on any type of blue light blocking glasses, the one thing I did notice about this brand, which I really love, was that it did initiate a lot of parasympathetic relaxation. Like my head literally stopped, I say, having attention when I was working on patients. And so, you know, I know you're the same way. I mean, when we find somebody, something and somebody sends it to us, I like put it to the test. And I'm telling you, like, this has really helped me. So kudos to Matt. He's he's a funny guy. I mean, he'll be like, he'll text you or call you. And he's like, he's like in Budapest. Oh my God. And he's like uh, overseas somewhere. He's like, oh yeah, I'm watching my friends or tennis pros watch tennis players. And (laughs) it's just amazing. Like, to live that life as in a hard worker, smart guy, but you know, we, yeah. we, we meet people, don't we, that are just, you know, just have this nice, ex- what is there, eccentricities or eccentricities. That's yeah. it. That's the name. Yeah. 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 And the, I don't know him personally, but he connected with someone on my patient team and sent me this pair. I'm, I miss again, not respond, uh, not sponsored by, is it all right? I mean, I thought it was raw, like the sun god, Egyptian yeah. sun god. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Raw optics. Yeah. Yep. And, and I you will, man. Yeah. I, I can talk to him about, I mean, I know he sent it to you, but I can, if you ever want me to like, just, you know, yeah. just tell him like, Hey, you need to talk to Will more. Okay. <laughs> no, I love it. And I, um, I wear like the darker ones at night and I have noticed such a, I fall asleep so much faster wearing, being consistent with blue light blocking glasses. And I've worn a lot of different brands of blue light blocking glasses. I try them all, like you say, for patients and kind of seeing what's best. I really like these. And there's a few other brands that I like as well, but this is, this is definitely what I'm wearing and experimenting with right now. And I'm pleasantly surprised. I am too, man. Like sometimes when I go, when I go from home to office, I'll put on the or early morning. Sometimes I put the afternoons a little bit earlier because I need to keep my tones a little bit brought down just a bit because I know when my cortisol, it'll start to jump a bit in the afternoon. But I think it's funny because I'll notice that when I'm driving to work, I'll feel like I'm a little bit sleepy and I'll be like, why am I feeling? And I'll take the glasses off because it's just increased my parasympathetic. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I'll take them off and I drive. I'm like, now I'm getting back in the zone. But when I get to work, <laughs> I literally put them right on, stay, stay focused. Yeah. You know? uh, stay so relaxed. For people that don't know like what we're talking about and they're listening to this, <laughs> not watching this, they can't see our, our glasses. Can you explain like the, the signs behind it and what we're talking about? Yes, I can do it as good a job as Matt, but He's saying that at different points of the day that our bodies need the blue light spectrum out of the full light spectrum more in certain amounts than other times of the day. So in the morning time, there is a certain frame or a certain time that your body would need maybe an hour and a half to two hours that can start and it can be different for people in the sense like their biology, Mm -hmm. but you'll need a higher amount of blue light in the morning and then you want to have a reduced amount because if you have too much blue light at night it can overstimulate your pineal gland which helps you wake up so if you hit the light hit your sensorium in your skin you start to increase more of the chemicals to make you actually wake up more so you use different colored lenses at different times of day to block out or filter certain amounts of blue light so that you're not you're not you're getting enough in the morning So you can actually stimulate the pineal gland, the gland that helps you with melatonin. And then in the afternoon, you're actually going to block out excessive blue light, i.e. tablets, cell phones, any type of computer that could actually keep you up at night. So we're using these these glasses to actually help. And they say that it actually increases our parasympathetic tone in our body. And Dr. Will and I will like when we talk to our patients, it's like, how do we keep ourselves from getting in too much sympathetic, too much excitement? Mm -hmm. So if you use these glasses, you're actually going to find out that you can actually stay relaxed throughout the day and stay pretty focused if you use yeah. it at the right time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I have, yeah, as I mentioned, like the lighter ones I have on now during the day and then the darker ones, the, um, I, I know the, I also notice less eye strain cause I'm in telehealth. I'm looking at screen all day long. So like my yeah. eyes get fatigued and people, so I'm, I'm, I've turned into, I'm like looking more and more like the cliched biohacker, which I like, I'm like, don't love, but it's, <laughs> it's from my well being. I'm practicing what I teach. Dang it. Um, so <laughs> I, I wish I didn't look like this. So anyways, <laughs> the, um, how did you get into natural medicine, man? How do you get into acupuncture, natural medicine? How did, or how did it find you? Um, I think that it just, 
found me because it worked on my family. And I think it's also in my blood. So in a nutshell, my dad knew a chiropractor that was a close friend of his and it fixed his back because my dad was in the military. He was a drill sergeant and he had bone on bone because he had gotten Lyme disease. He'd gotten uh, some effects of chemical warfare from you know the war. And so it damaged his joints. And so he had always wear a back brace. And he went to a doctor friend of his, Dr. Bowles. And um, I always took my dad's um, weight support belt that you wrap around your waist to like keep his back steady. And I always thought I looked like a Superman kind of guy. Well, um, he would wear that all the time and then he stopped wearing it. And so I asked my dad, even at like very young age, I was like, why don't you have to wear your belt anymore? He goes, well, I went to this doctor who did some work on me and he goes, my back doesn't need surgery anymore. So I was like, oh, wow. Cause he's supposed to get back surgery. And then my brother who breathed through his mouth, like from when I was so young, he still shared the same room as I, he was having allergies to dust mites. And so he's always breathing through his mouth. And he's always breathing his nose, doing inhalers, having to get, do shots. And before he had to do his uh, next round of shots, the doctor said, hey, we can help him with the nerves that help his sinuses. And my dad's like, okay. So he took them there. Brother could start breathing through his nose. And it kind of scared me because I didn't hear my brother at night anymore. So in my mind, I was thought, I would love to do something. Even at a young age, I was like, I'd love to help somebody like that. Fast forward, um, I just, in school, I just thought about, like, I would love to do something either in the health realm or do, like, something like being a pilot, like a jet pilot. My dad was in the Air Force at the after he was in the Army. And I don't know. I, I think I was just drawn to it. I just kind of made a decision that I want to do something with nervous system neurology. My dad's friend, another friend of his, said, you need to tell your son to go to chiropractic uni for university school. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll look into it. So when I got there, I got into acupuncture because – I had gotten into a rear end accident and many of you out there listening probably like, yeah, I got into a bad accident and it made me have chronic headaches and migraines like every day. And I would go to get adjusted and getting some things under my neck, but it seemed like it always popped out of place. There's a guy in the, you know, the trimesters, they call up above you. He was like in the seventh trimester of his uh, uh, clinicals. And he said, Hey, come by, let me check you out. I'll find out what I can do. And then, brother, he said, hey, you've got some stuff going on with your gallbladder. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, these areas right here on your neck are all associated with the acupuncture lines of the gallbladder. And you have a sick gallbladder. And that's why your neck keeps going out of alignment. And I was like, I, I get, I kind of get what you're saying. So he worked on neural lymphatics. And we're taught that in school, like find the neural lymphatic. We just rubbed them out. And he did adjustment. And he did some acupuncture points on me. And after that, I slept for a long time, like slept for 14 hours at night. My neck never went out again. Oh. And so that made me look into the organ relationship and how the strength of an organ changes the electrical pathways of the body. And I was like, this is what acupuncture is talking about. And then when I said it found me, my mom, she's Korean, little Korean woman, very feisty. And she goes, oh, after all these years, doc, I was like, she goes, yeah, you're, uh, you have distant cousins that do what you do. I was like, what do you mean I have distant cousins that do what I do? And she goes, up in the hills of Korea, they used to do the, uh, she would do this like the Qigong and do the herbs and help people. I said, why haven't I ever met them? And she goes, they're up way up in the hills. And she goes, nobody talks to them. They're kind of crazy. They're crazy people. And I was like, thanks, mom. I appreciate the shout out. But I think that it's kind of in the blood. So that's, I mean, in like that conglomerate. That's how it all came together, yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's so cool, man. I didn't know that. It's like this ancestral component of it. And you wonder, I mean, these are the relatives that are alive now, you, let alone generations. And you think of what was was maybe going on in your family line in Korea. It's so cool. Have you met them yeah. yet? Have you met them yet? Have you gone to the hills of South Korea? No, I, I got close. Um, I have some cousins that lived in the farmlands at the base of the mountains. If you can remember the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah. The bamboo forest, that's what my mom's family's property looks like. But I never went up there. I told, I told her, I said, the next time I go, I hadn't been back in like eight years, maybe nine. I said, I would love to go talk to them or meet them at least. So yeah. I, if I do, I'm going to videotape it. I'll send it to you, brother. But oh, you I'd love should. To it. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, do you speak any Korean? A little bit, joke them, like 80 bit. And so um, I, I speak enough to get me a little bit in trouble. Like when I go to Korea, like I can say all the like the proper things and then they yeah. talk really fast. I'm like, hold on, I, let me let me pay attention. So a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, okay, the, you mentioned meridians. Most people mm -hmm. know what they are um, that listen to the pod. We've talked about them in previous episodes, but not in great detail. So I'd like to, to kind of do a deep dive and 
Like, what are the origins of them? I've heard people explain the origins of meridians possibly coming from fetal development, like the nodes of the nervous system of babies as they're growing in their mother's womb. And the meridians that we have as adults today, these energy points are correlated with the sort of primordial nervous system of a baby. Is that mm -hmm. one way of, I mean, am I on yep. something there? Tell me about what's It is very much so, brother. It is. It's like that whenever they talk about development, there's one acupuncturist that's here in Nashville, Tennessee area that talks about like you just talked about how the development within that early nervous system and its derivatives, basically like pathways that are actually etched out within the fascia as well. So as they develop, there is a very big relationship between like the cerv cervical ganglia or the spinal ganglia nodes and with pathways of acupuncture. Um, and I also think that when we talk about how you develop as an embryo, they're showing that with the fascial system, since the fascial system is a great conductor of electricity, our soft tissue, mm -hmm. that as you develop early, that where your nervous system develops, your body is also telling your connective tissue to create pathways like these small tubule pathways. So you have it being developed from early nervous system development, but you also have your fascial system designed to actually create these small highways in your fascial system that they've shown that actually pushes electrical signals right through those little tubes, just like a highway of energy. Mm -hmm. So they, there is no explanation. Well, there is an explanation in Chinese medicine about how the original chi like that comes through the kidneys goes in and floods the system, but there's nothing that would disprove the thing you just talked about. And I believe with all my heart, everything's kind of intertwined about how the nervous system, how the electrical system and the chi all meet together when you're a baby. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're, we're made up of energy. The entire universe is energy. And I think that traditional Chinese medicine, like so many ancient medicines, like Ayurveda medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and even Hippocrates and Paracelsus talked about these things and they didn't have randomized control trials. They just saw anecdotally, this is how we got people better. And these origin stories of humans and energy and energy medicine, it, it is fascinating to me and how science is really catching up with antiquity. We're now kind of substantiating the mechanisms of action of these things. Mm -hmm. In the West for so long, the fascia, you mentioned, it's been treated as almost this just another part of your musculoskeletal system, just this sort of sheath around the muscles, right? But it's an important part of this energy or electrical conduction. Um, and a lot of people can, science is showing that can a lot of stress and trauma can be stored up in the fascia, correct? It definitely can be. And I think that, remember the book we saw in School Brothers called Anatomy Trains? It's a, it's yeah. a book that talks about how our fascial system is connected at end to end, like to the tip of our toes, to the front of our, our eyebrows. And this fascial system, you can look at how we have connected tissue, whether it's the, the what they call the periosteum that covers your bones, or if you have the meninges that covers your spinal cord and all your nerves, every portion of our body has that connective tissue. And as you develop, that was developed to transmit electrical signals because of the way it's made up of water and different proteins. But one other cool thing is that it is known in Chinese medicine to actually conduct the electrical signals that are dealt with emotions. Hmm. It's one of the highways of emotional energy. So when we're young, we are processed, our body's processing this uh, emotional information in our fascia. So you'll see sometimes like they talk about in uh, literature about how like a gazelle gets chased by a cheetah, cheetah grabs it, it escapes, it shakes it all off. It says, what is it doing? It's shaking off the excess stress from the fascial system. So hmm. the fascia is to me like, if you stripped everything away from your body, muscles, ligaments, tendons, skin, and left the fascia, you'd have a perfect match and map of a person's identity. And that's how important it is. And all these electrical highways are in that fascia. And I think it's really important too that anybody that gets stuck in a certain part of their fascia is going to hinder that electrical signal. That's why yoga and stretching and these techniques are so beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. That great, great explanation. I had uh, Kimberly Snyder on the podcast wow. recently, um, and she was telling me she, uh, one of her latest, uh, recent books, her, her latest book, is talking about the electrical conduction of the heart and its mm. crosstalk with the brain. Um, I'd love to see more studies. I think we're on to something as far as this connection of 
the resonance uh, of the electrical magnetic frequency of the heart and the fascia's implication to that, right? We are electrical beings and these things are, mm -hmm. are just now being scraped by. I mean, she in her book, she's talking about heart rate variability and mm. other metrics you can measure when you start to yeah. shift more into this parasympathetic, which you were talking about with the meridians. That'd be good. What's the, okay, the book, um, there's there's a website, brother, that um, I, used, I used to like to reference called heartmath.org. Well, yeah, heart well, math, and this is through HeartMath. She did the study with the HeartMath uh, heart oh, Institute. Man. Yeah. Oh, it's such good info. Was it a great podcast? Because, oh, so man, good. I'm telling you, such good info, right? I yeah. got to listen to that one, man. Yeah, I got, yeah, oh. listen to that episode. And and again, I, I agree with you. I've known about HeartMath Institute, but I was now they kind of bridged their work with her work with meditation and breath work. It's really um, fascinating. So you mentioned headaches and migraines. So many people struggle with that. And you mentioned the, you know, you'd get adjusted and help for a little bit through chiropractic, but it wouldn't kind of last long, but until you mm -hmm. dealt with these meridians. So what mm -hmm. meridians were off in this way that allowed that adjustment, that realignment to, to hold um, mm -hmm. sustainably for you? The Yes, headaches. Anytime a person comes into the clinic that says they have a migraine or a recurring headache, I always tell them to get their gallbladder checked or their small intestine for SIBO. I know that's something we talk about a lot in, in our conversations with our clients and patients, but the meridian for me was the gallbladder and the gallbladder channel. If you guys can imagine this, if you're listening, it starts at the corner of the eye on both sides. And the second point goes to where your TMJ. Mm -hmm. So if you have tight jaws, TMJ grinding at night, you wear your teeth out because you're clenching at night. That's the gallbladder. The small intestine meridian is only a body inch up from that. So if you get pain around the ears as well, because those two meridians wrap around the ear, jump back up to the forehead, and then they go right back down the sides of the neck. Mm -hmm. So anytime a person has a chronic migraine or headache, they're going to have to have that association with their upper digestion. And that was me, brother. I literally drank Coca-Cola and ate Frosted Flakes. I don't know how much. I ate toaster strudels like they're going out of style. And for <laughs> me to think like it's, I'm going to have a good gallbladder, I'm not going to have a good gallbladder. For you guys out there you're listening and laughing going, that's me. When I had that, it dehydrated my gallbladder so bad that the energy that should have gone out from the sides of my eyes, down through my jaw, around my head, should have gone all the way down to my feet. But my gallbladder was so sick that it said, hey, I need more electrical energy because I need to repair. So it stagnated the chi in my meridian to keep it there. Yeah. And so what happens? Inflammation in my head. I get too much histamine response. Now everything I eat is causing me to have a histamine response. And so I was having this headache. And then in response to the sympathetic tone of my body, which was getting high alert, the little areas around your vagus nerve, remember guys, it goes right beside your carotid, right? If you have that vagus nerve getting irritated, it will cause small muscle contractions and shifting around your neck. And you're always going to have one or two places in your neck that goes, oh, the doctor and the chiropractor always hits this spot every single time, all from my nutrition, all from my digestion. And those are the two spots. The other spot was my colon. I had some chronic diarrhea with constipation and that large intestine reading goes right down the sides near my Adam's apple along with the stomach. So all that to say without getting boring guys is that whenever I had a migraine, I was then pointed to all my digestion because all those meridians go right through my neck. So please don't think that, Oh, I just slipped wrong. Brother, you know, when people always say that to you, they're like, Oh, I just slipped wrong. We're like, I agree. I, I, re I really, really am very glad you think of that, but mostly it's going to be your digestion. Yeah, for sure. No, this isn't boring at all. I know people are loving this because it's this sort of clinical breakdown is I, I what I wanted to get out of our conversation. So thank you for this. The um okay, so did at that point or even for how that you work with people now, what would be the approach here? Uh, acupuncture and explain to people. I mean, we're talking about fascia and how the needles work or acupressure. Are you a fan of that with these specific I love it. points? I love it. I think that you're right. I think you should go structure with some biochemistry and nutrition and definitely emotional work. In a nutshell, the fascial system, when it gets bound up around the base of the neck and the skull, right in that area, and especially the upper traps. If you guys out there have headaches with upper traps, the gallbladder 20 is a main point right there in the gallbladder 21. 
and it's going to be bound up. So the fascia needs to be released with acupuncture, acupressure. Quick observation about how it works. When your fascia binds up, that electrical signal is trying to travel smoothly through the fascia. But if those acupuncture points get bound up, the fascia around it contorts and it almost wraps like saran wrap. You ever done that? You wrap saran wrap and it just gets bound up. Mm -hmm. That's what your fascia does. And so the electrical signal is trying to move through that area of the body and it can't because the fascia is still bound up mm -hmm. because the stagnation of the energy from the organ. So you have to take a needle and stick it in the fascia at the right angle. They call an acupuncture, putting it at different angles. And this is a beauty. If you put an, a, a needle in a certain angle, what it's doing is a couple things. It is etching that needle into the right, correct angle to bring chi through the point because it's using that little needle like a lightning rod. It's using it like a grounding rod, using that energy and passing to the other side where the block is at. It also acts as an antenna to the environmental energy that's in your biofield, and it's allowing your body to attract the frequency that's needed. And that's a beautiful thing about our body, right, brother? It's like you literally are taking the environmental frequencies, and your body knows which one it wants to attract. And the master acupuncturist can come up and put it at the right angle and say, that's it. And it puts chi right into that point, um, breaking the block. So when you do that, I always say get acupressure, acupuncture. Go treat the gallbladder. When I then go into biochemistry, I say, I'm going to do everything I can to help you with herbals or supplements, changing your diet to cleanse your gallbladder or your small intestine. So it means cutting out sugar, corn syrup, high fructose, anything that's simplified sugars or, or simple sugars, and going into a more whole food diet. But one of the most important things is how do we cleanse the gallbladder when it's so diseased? When you're drinking plenty of water, you're making sure that you cut out all the refined sugar. I use different types of herbals, such as phylanthus, which is stone breaker. It's a stone breaking type of herb. So guys, look at phylanthus or one called Bodyguard Supreme. I'm not promoting anybody. That's one good one. Or schisandra. Everybody loves schisandra, milk thistle. These are the ones that actually create a lot of uh, help in breaking up those stones by producing glutathione. So I tell patients the acupressure, the, the, uh, the pills of schisandra. And when you combine those, you're going to naturally unwind the fascial system. People are yeah. going to actually naturally unwind because when you take pressure off the gallbladder and break up the stones in the gallbladder or the sludge, it's going to release chi to go right through those points. And all those little stagnant points on the sides of your neck are going to be relaxed and relieved. And you'll stop your belching and your burping and your floating stools, which are all signs of gallbladder issues. Mm -hmm. But I want you guys to think about this. If you have that chronic headache, and all these things are resonating with you, think about when is the last time you felt overwhelmed? And that's what I tell them, doc. I say, what does the gallbladder physiologically do? It holds bile. It holds it. Our liver makes a green substance called bile. It puts it into the gallbladder. Physiologically, it holds it there to give you the extra bile to dissolve fats if you had too much of your... Uh, uh, you know, sausage in the morning or too much high fats, it pushes it into your stomach from that little gallbladder. But the gallbladder is a holding tank. But your brain uses an organ and it and it tells your body what is the job of this organ is to hold on to things. Mm. The same area of your brain that's associated with the gallbladder is also stimulated by the same emotions of holding on too much. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. So man. your body, whether you're holding on to bad sludge or you're holding on to a bad relationship. Yeah. You're holding on to the toxic emotions in your life, the toxic people in your life. Your gallbladder is going to be stimulated and get drained. And then you'll start having stagnant gallbladder. So I say, find those things that you're holding on to that causes the frustration and the resentment. Cause that's what you're going to do after you hold on to it for a mm -hmm. long time. So I want everybody out there to know, like you have to look at it at a different angle. It's not to be overwhelming to you, but an, Finding that emotion. I love your book. When you talked about how people put emotions with their food, it is the truth. And they literally put it in their organs. And that's why the beauty of me, when I looked at my 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 case, was I looked at my gall, but I was what? I was holding all this junk I had when I was a kid for my family life. Mm. And it brought it up to memory when I started healing my gallbladder. I was like, yeah, hold on to that. So I know that was a little long-winded, guys. And Doc, it, I'm sorry about that. But that's what it means to have just a, an inside glimpse into your symptom, like yeah. to, you know, yeah. what's a headache to us? 
yeah. you and I were like, dude, we're going down. We're going deep. Yeah, upstream, baby. I love yeah. it. I love that you brought up Shashandra. She's great. She's a great girl. She's <laughs> a great girl. <laughs> Shashandra, you know, it, it, people don't yeah. talk about that lovely adaptogen, Shashandra. It's, it's so good. Oh, man. It's one of my favorites. I think that Shashandra, when you... It's such a great natural glutathione producer that it's one of the strongest detoxifiers. So people, when they take it with their liver congestion, I, I know you have seen it too. You'll see people's cholesterol levels get better, their LDLs or HDLs just by taking Shisandra. And it actually increases your mood, your libido, people's blood flows get better just from a little berry. I mean, it's a little berry, just uh, a little berry, man. Like if, if you and I are like, you say, well, if you're on a desert Island, what would you take? I'm like, Shisandra would be one of them. I'll tell you that one of the, you know, the basic herbs. All right. So let's look at another case study. I'm loving this. So let's go. We we talked about the, sort of the guts component to, and the gallbladder component specifically with migraines and headaches and looking at that from a, a doctor of oriental medicine, acupuncture perspective. Um, let's go down to like constipation. So many people struggle with constipation. Um, mm -hmm. What's a, what's your perspective on something like this? They may see it as just, I'm not pooping but it's so much more than that. What's the body telling you there? I think for me, the first thing I think about is what the action of the colon is trying to produce. And in Chinese medicine, they would say that one thing you need to learn to let go of is control. So the first thing I think about, I know it can be SIBO, like bacterial overgrowth. It could be parasites. It could be the things we've talked about, yeast and mold. I agree. But my first thought is your body... Remember, the colon is taking the toxic things in your life, extracting the water from it, right, to make solid poop to push through and get out of your system. So the hard, toxic things in your life, this sounds a little bit far-fetched, but it's what I believe when we talk about it, is that you take all those experiences in life, and some of them are not great. And if you can extract everything you can from them and learn and get all the benefit from it, and when it's time to move on, you should push it out of your life. But if you don't emotionally do that, you will trigger your colon to do the same thing. You will hold on to the actual toxicity. So mm -hmm. my first thought is the person, not blaming them, saying you're a control freak. What I am saying is that you're holding on to something that's toxic in your life. And there's some other thing that's making you be anal, anal retentive. Mm -hmm. When that happens, that's when people start to get excess parasite buildup. And they start to get ex excess mold buildup. And I'll, I often think that the amount of strep and staph should just naturally push through the colon. You should be able to have your bowel movements. But I always ask the patient, please think back to a former time in life, like an earlier time in life when you were controlled or you felt like you didn't have control of your life and things were out of control. Mm. And that's going to cause you to go into sympathetic tone. When you find that out, in my opinion, I do like different emotional techniques but I always go to the lower base of the spine at the L5 and sacrum. And they're always going to have low back pain because the nerve that goes to the colon is going to be lit up. And we, you and I have seen that all the time, doc. Mm -hmm. And then I start to use like percussion or I use needles around that low back because I need to increase the energy into that disc or into that low back area. But the get goal is, is to get their brain to basically eat the whole pie. They have been able to push away those little feelings of saying, oh, I have, I've been controlled, but I'm only able to handle 30% of this. Where was the rest stored? Mm -hmm. In your brain, pushed down, causing a big area of dysfunction that's consistently draining you of chi and energy. And what I'm trying to do is get your brain to recognize and get the full information from that colon. Mm -hmm. So at least if you're talking to your colon, maybe you wake up that area of the brain that's so suppressed. So if you increase the chi to the large intestine and you open up the spine, it'll shoot signals up to the brain. The brain's like, oh, something's going on down there. I got too many parasites. I got too much yeast. But then after a while, I guarantee a doctor, they're going to be like, I've got a little bit. I've been controlled. What's going on there? It's like, it's a way to use your body's symptoms to bring an awareness of what's going on emotionally. Because those people, you see them, Doc, right? They always yeah. forget. They're like, oh, that was a big deal. My dad controlled me. No, we're not saying that. Take it as real. Yeah. And constipation with the bloating and the gas 
I do find a lot of parasites in yeast and mold. Yeah. But my first thought is the emotional content. Probably. Right. Because that's, yeah. what that's what's keeping that poor migrating motor complex or vagal tone and back because their body's stuck in that fight or flight. Right. What, yes, what, what, yes, what, are, what are your favorite emotional release techniques? What are, what are some things you like leaning on here in this case? Man, there's so many good ones out there, brother. Um, I know I, I like, like people like neuroemotional technique, like NET. I like that. I would say, is it the most, I have a combination near emotional technique and there's some with EFT tapping. I love EFT tapping. If you have a really great practitioner, emotional freedom technique, there are a few new ones that I've seen that are done like emotion code. That's really awesome. I think I like NET um, primarily because it uses what we practice with the spine and the acupuncture meridians mm -hmm. to actually stimulate the, the prefrontal cortex. That's what they're trying to do is excite the prefrontal with you know, small movements on the spine and acupuncture um, stimulation. Um, the other one I have seen work really well is uh, NAET. It's a, it's an allergy elimination technique. And what some practitioners have seen, if, if you're listening out there, try the NET, but NAET, they use just around the globe. They use acupuncture points around the globe. And all they're doing is connecting your organs to each other. And if you think a thought or know an emotion, you're treating that thought like an allergy. Because mm -hmm. what's happening, your histamine rises, your mast cell production gets worse. So when you you can use an allergy technique and get it, I tell them, brother, take a picture of the person that you see and see if I can get a stimulation out of your nervous system. And sure enough, their vagus nerve just goes haywire when they see somebody that hurt them. And you start treating the acupuncture points for the allergy around the world easy. And they're like, man, that doesn't bother me as bad. Those are some of my favorites, if you say. I know it's a lot. And there's no. another one I love. Uh, TBM, to total body modification. They have a good system too. Amazing. Yeah. Good, great guy. And we'll put the links to, to some of the main ones there in the show notes for people wanna, that want to learn more about this um, at drwilco.com. Okay. So constipation, we deal with the, the mental emotional side of things. What are some points that you like and, and herbs there? What are some things you would do? There? Oh, first LI4. If you guys can see me on camera, if you take your hand in the web between your thumb and your index finger, if you go down the bone of the index finger in the web, LI4 is probably one of your biggest proponents. And I and, also and for love people, to do- And for people that don't know, when you're saying like, you said gallbladder 20, 21, uh, uh, they, all the meridians are numbered with the organ, correct? There's like an organ and a number. Exactly okay. right. Exactly. And and the and the English and the French, we gave it numbers because we could not remember all the yeah. Chinese based names at every point. Right. And I know that's why we're cracking. I was like, I couldn't remember like, you know, anything with cranes and swans. I would not remember that on the point. <laughs> um, so if you go down the meridian, just look at what we're talking about, like large intestine four, go online, Google it. And when you go there, go to large intestine four. The next one I would do is lar uh, liver three. Liver three is a big one and spleen six. So liver three is between the web of your big toe and your second toe. Liver three and spleen six is on the inside of the ankle. I guarantee you 95% of Americans are going to have these points that are very tender. If you rub those points out, also use herbs like Cascara Sagrada. It's a beautiful herb, Cascara Sagrada. I also like Mimosa Pudica, which is a very good seed that acts like Velcro to parasites. Those are my top two. I've also found Shisandra be a good laxative. And one that's surprised me, I won't get is Chinese Coptis. Chinese Coptis is known as golden thread, but everybody I put on that, it's it's nature's antibiotic and it will kill a whole bunch of infections. It'll naturally get people to move in their bowel. So those are my top favorites. And I think that, you know, we can't forget, you know, good magnesium. I'm not forgetting that. Good magnesium, B vitamins. So when you put you know, if you put cascara sagrada together with a good magnesium and you start rubbing these points out, watch out. The next morning, you are going to have an amazing monumental blowout. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we want to not overcorrect, right? Let's recalibrate that. Man. Yeah, yeah. Balance, brother. Blow it the down. The young, so, brother. That, well, you know what? In all truth, because this is like clinical uh, talking shop here. Some people that are chronically constipated, they, they're like almost when it, if they do overcorrect and maybe do too much too soon, then they're like mm -hmm. almost happy with like chronic looser stools. That's not what we want either, right? We want, no, I would say, no, it's like, I'm with you. Like, you know, when I love coffee enemas, I, I proponent of coffee enemas and such, but there comes a, like, it's not that you can do, like I'm saying, you're hurting yourself, but you're right. You don't want to get to where your, your stools are passing through so quickly that yeah. you can't get all the water out of it. You have to have a, healthier bowel movement yeah. you want more solid yeah we I'm said with you. two to three snakes a day that's the bristol chart frequency of formation <laughs> yep. and people will never look at snakes again 
to say. <laughs> um, all right. What, one more condition. I want to talk about anxiety. Like so many people in our culture, especially this any time of year, but it's like there's so much frenetic energy inside and externally, societally. So what's a mm -hmm. what's a holistic Dr. Motley perspective on anxiety? Um, anxiety, I, I know you've had such great guests on your podcast and some are so eloquent about how they talk about like dopamine and serotonin levels and about um, methylation, like liver processing to help you break them down. And I think that's meant for the experts there. I think personally, when we talk about anxiety, um, my first thought is always looking at the organs that are so sick and diseased that they're allowing certain toxicities to build up in the brain. So my first thought is always high amounts of neurotoxins. And I hope this makes sense. You, There are neurotoxins such as aldehydes, okay, like stuff you put in dead bodies, like aldehyde. And it's a nerve. It decreases nerve conduction. There's also ammonia because ammonia, if it's not broken down, parasites produce it, bacteria produces it. It'll fry your brain. You also have acetic acid. I can go through all this, but there are certain types of microbes that create such neural toxins that they fry your brain and we don't get enough antioxidants to drain them. The biggest thing though is if an infection gets into the head and creates anxiety, my first thoughts though, I love like with emotions, is that I always find out the emotional key, which organ is the most disease. And I always say it's going to be probably your kidneys and your adrenal glands because there's a certain amount of fear. All right. Yeah. Now, this is like, we see it. People are in overstimulation. Their adrenals are so tanked, they can't even get and handle their emotional status or like hearing bad news. The kidneys, if they're sick or tired, they cannot pull the energy through the Ming Men. What that means is the actual portal of where the energy came in from your parents, right in the navel area. And what mm. that's supposed to do is that put energy into the kidneys. They act as batteries. And it's then supposed to, through the triple warmer meridian, Bring up energy through your spine, up and down, which gives you energy to your thyroid, your adrenals, your testes in men, your ovaries in women. You're supposed to give all these organs enough chi to handle your day. But if your kidneys and your adrenals are tired because you're too afraid, you're fearful of life, have you ever felt so out of place like I don't belong, I feel like a fish out of water, I feel like I can't move forward in life and I'm stuck? you are suffering from chronic kidney adrenal fatigue. And that will keep energy from going into your stress fighters. So you have to address the fighting mechanism. And that's when that whole area is congested, your kidneys get worn out as well by all those neurotoxins your body's trying to get rid of. All the aldehydes, all this stuff, you can't filter them out. And so they recycle and they can build up in your brain and then you start getting toxins and then you can get infections like Lyme disease, parasites, yeast, mold, which is a big thing causing anxiety. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But we have to look back too into that original area, brother, that area called the Ming Man, where you, is the chi actually getting through your spine? Mm -hmm. And that will cause us to have this buildup of the infections in the head and around the ears and the eyes. I, I can't tell you how many times when people come in and they'll say, well, I had a really bad infection around my sinuses. I had strep throat when I was a kid. I had my tonsils taken out. And I still find clinical work and symptoms from Chinese medicine that says you still got strep in there, getting the test done. But then you go back and go, what about your family line? Did you have fear? Oh, yeah, my mom was completely fearful all the time. We yeah. get the traits from our parents and yeah. we can't filter out. Not blaming yeah. our parents. I love them to death. But that can happen. Yeah. So you're even saying – and, and um, Science is just catching up with this, but even at the time of fertilization, like the health of your parents, even the mental, emotional health, when you look at intergenerational trauma, transgenerational trauma, I mean, we're seeing methylation changes, right, at in utero. Is that what you're saying? A, a TCM perspective, Chinese medicine perspective, would even go back that far. You may be yes. anxious about something today, but it may be going, like, what caused that energy in the first place? Oh, I, I agree. Like whenever you find it, the moment of, you know, like when uh, conception time occurs, it's like you have to think about it as as that union creates this huge like mini bam, bang into what into a hologram and your body is following a hologram. The cells are following a pattern. And depending on where your mom or your dad was at. At that point in their life, they've shifted their body through methylation. Their genes have been warped or injured from their stress. They're going to say they're going to send the same type of information to you, yeah. which makes you and I 
more susceptible to get triggered by the same stress as your parents had at that time. Mm -hmm. So if your dad was getting really afraid at that time or felt injured, you had the same tendency because you're now you have a hologram in your kidneys that follow the same pattern as your dad. And yeah. you're going to respond the same exact way. Now, I'm not saying you're stuck there, but you're right. That generational blueprint that is passed down to one of us, it's a beautiful thing that you can understand what your parents went through. And if you respond the same way, do not look at it as negative. Go, eh, yeah. fall on a hologram. I can shift that if yeah. I if I do enough work. Yeah, well, because know? as I'm always telling telehealth patients, like as trauma can be inherited, so can healing. Like you can break the cycle. Yes, and we're, yes we're, brother. And all the people that are listening to this right now are cycle breakers so you, but you have to know what you're dealing with to do something about it and if anything i think this should give you a little bit more of grace the person that's listening to this of like well no don't go with like like the doc mark is saying is i'm screwed what can i do but like wow i have more compassion on myself it's not just about me and i have more compassion on the people that came before me and it's like maya angelou said like when you know better you do better like our grandparents oh, didn't know this stuff now we can really bring to light with these tools that or weren't really commonplace in American culture, wherever your parents and grandparents mm, came mm. from. And it's remembering, going back to what how we kind of started this conversation, these things are thousand years old, thousands of years old, that for generations, the past, let's just look over the 20th century, and even before that, have forgotten these things. Um, and now they're having a, a renaissance, a rebirth, if you will. I agree. I think that now we're seeing that such good information, great doctors as yourself and, you know, we know Dr. X and many people out there that are really good doctors that are spreading the news about energetic medicine as some people think it's woo woo. I, I think that now that Renaissance is making us realize, right, that, that information can be passed along in different ways from the generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Chinese medicine, when they, when they say they could, help correct you could work on a parent and the work on the parent can work and help heal the child without even treating the child's why because there's resonance and vibration between mother and parent it's like that's been in chinese medicine for years and like now we're just starting to get to the point like oh you mean the vibration in my heart can affect the person in the next room i'm like yes and i just love it that now it's going to be like you know we're not looked at too much as weirdos you know <laughs> like it's this is coming the, up to up to par you know yeah absolutely absolutely um, I, and I haven't, I don't think I've ever shared this on the podcast before, but, um, I'll, I'll share it now. We were talking about conception and you know, pregnancy and how, mental, emotional health and physical health and how, how it impacts baby. I, when my wife was pregnant with both of our kids, we, mm -hmm. she went to an acupuncturist, Dr. Yu, shout out to Dr. Yu, who is a part of a lineage in, uh, I think she was Korean as well. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is you, you a Korean last name maybe? Yeah. Yeah. You uh, can be, why yeah, you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, she was brilliant. I haven't seen her in 20, I mean, 18 years now, but the, she weeks, like after conception, one, two weeks, maybe three weeks after conception, she could tell before a pregnancy test could even tell, she felt the pulse of my wife. We weren't even trying to have a baby. So it wasn't even like on our radar. We did certainly didn't tell the acupuncturist. And she said, she felt the pulse. She said, I think you're pregnant. And if you're pregnant, it's a boy for my son, Solomon. Is that crazy, man? I mean, this Dude, is what you're talking about. This is what you're talking about. This is about. what I'm talking about, man. This is, go ahead, keep going. I love no, this, man. But so my she, daughter, she did the same thing a few years later. My, my same thing. It was, we weren't trying for a second. Because apparently <laughs> things just happen. This blessing just happened yeah. without intention. But the uh, she said the same thing. I, you're pregnant. And if you're pregnant, it's a girl. Weeks later, a pregnancy test showed it for both when it could show yeah. up physiologically. And months later is when it showed up with the gender and the ultrasound. She was right both times. This yeah, is what is. we're talking about. And people out there listen like you can do I mean. I, I would say that those, those individuals are from the lineage, from the families that pass down this pathway. There has to be, when they can read the pulse so well, and you're right, when you have those individuals can look at the tongue and tell you what, like, what you maybe have or what you're going through, and they'll, I've seen it ruin it for some people. They're <laughs> like, I went there and they told me what I was going to have, and I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm not that guy, so go to their, to that person, but it isn't amazing, but it's like, when you have a lineage of somebody who can feel your pulse, but there's also, in a way that 
you know, we work on individuals that a natural amount of electricity and chi is passing through, and they're not only feeling your blood pulse, the bounding in your wrist, but they're trained to feel the electricity in your blood. And I'm just, I'm a little bit really just, just amazed because now what they're doing is you can read your, um, your oxygen levels with an infrared sensor that you get on your wrist. I said, all of this, all of the new technology is just finally catching up to what Chinese medicine has been showing. It's just putting it into a little computer instead of having a human do it. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love it, man. I can talk all day about this, but yeah. I know, man, but you, what's, you, you're a busy man. I won't what, let you take your time. But so what's happened? I mean, I'm, I, you're not keeping me. I'm, I'm like, I, I'm learning from you, man. Is the, the, what we, do we even know? What is traditional Chinese medicine's perspective on what was happening there? I mean, cause there weren't, as far as like that early on in the pregnancy, nothing can be seen or measured, but there's obviously something going on energetically and electrically that could tell actually the gender of the baby, not just the baby that's there, which is amazing in and of itself, but the gender weeks after conception. I mean, there's something powerful and, and I would say magical, but in the most, you know, clinical way, <laughs> because it, yeah. it, it, we, we think we know so much, but we don't know so much. And it's the height of, arrogance and hubris are modern western thinking to think we've got it all figured out we don't got yep. it all figured out no it's like when you have i've seen some doctors and practitioners who say this and i again these are the people that have been trained for generations that when they feel the pulse like especially if they felt your wife's pulse they'll know how your wife's pulse feels from practice like being around her and, and working with her but they also know which organs in the bounding apparatus of your pulse, they'll know, they can check if it's like liver, gallbladder, spleen, stomach, there's certain areas on the pulse points on your wrist. But what they, what they do is they'll find a difference within like the triple warmer, which is one of them that has to do with the ovaries and the reproductive system. And there's a simple way, like they say that, well, it's not simple, they're masters. And they'll feel the fluctuation in that area of the pulse line, which gives them an indication there's a change and a shift. There may be another person or another being pulling on that. Now, what I have heard, and there may be other acupuncturists that can give, give us more insight. I hope they can. When you take that, and you say maybe she found out like maybe a week later or not, maybe at the same time, they'll go and try to find another point on the same wrist to see if the testosterone building organs are a little bit higher or mm -hmm. lower. And so they can get an idea of which organ. Now, my mom said that there were like Korean medicine women that would literally that had the same. They could look at your eyes and tell you if you had this. And they would say like just the way the stomach looked, they would say, oh, you're going to have a boy without saying anything. And I think that that kind of exact focus and that precision to be able to feel a pulse point like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing to me, brother. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that, that takes generations to learn. Yeah, I Just, love it, man. Um, as you know, the podcast, it's called The Art of Being Well. At the end of every episode, we've missed a few. And the listeners let me know, hey, you didn't do your art of being well. So we're not going to skip it this time. But we have Dr. Chris <laughs> Motley's Art of Being Well. That people love yeah. as part of the pod. Uh, first question is, what is the worst tasting healthy food that you eat? It tastes freaking disgusting, but you still eat it because of some nutri oh. nutrient benefit. Hands down, cilantro. The worst thing you could ever eat. What? Cilantro. I oh. love cilantro. No, I mean, it that's because you're not half Korean, brother. Most <laughs> Koreans do not like cilantro. I'm going to tell you, it. they say it tastes like soap. I eat it now because I love salsa and I've learned how to eat it, but no, I mean, it's funny, I, man. It's, well, you know, there's mm -hmm. a, there's a gene that codes for that, right? Where we taste it differently. It does not taste like soap for me at all. That's funny. Oh. <laughs> I, you could ask me, I'm not wanting to eat it, but I'll eat it for, you know, if it's for the good of the people. I'll do it. <laughs> to fit in in Nashville. You'll have oh. it. <laughs> what, what uh, is, what is a place that you've traveled to that is, just still to this day, like somewhere you definitely want to go back to. It was super special. Um, I think it would be for right now, Italy. I would say Italy was so special um, because when I was in um, the mountains where they had a lot of the olive olive fields yeah, and the winery, but the olive fields there, I don't know, the energy around it was was so in so good to me and my body because I'm a wood element, but um, that was probably... I want to go back. I wish I could stay a lot longer, but the olive fields, I don't know how to explain it. It just, it really fed my heart and soul. I love that place. What part of Italy was that? Um, we were in Florence and then we went to Tuscany. So it was an area like 
we were in Florence. It was traveling to Tuscany. We went to this sheep farm where they had these really amazing, you know, sheep cheeses and stuff. But it was like on these mountainside and they just had like these olive fields. And, um, you know, when you wake up brother, sometimes because I love the mountains, like I could say go back. But overseas, like it's like waking up and I'm like, I just feel like my heart is just so, so feel so warm here. And like and, and like I didn't want to leave. So that's, that's probably cool. the place I'd go back to. You said you're a wood element. For people that don't know what that is, um, they're going to be wondering, oh. what is he saying? Oh, yeah. Wood elements. Okay, real quickly. Uh, wood elements, there's five elements, maybe like six of argument sake. But what they say in Chinese uh, medicine is that we all mimic a certain element of the earth. Since we're made of the dust of the ground or the carbon, they say that like there's wood, water, earth, metal, and fire. Like I am looking like a tree root. If you looked at me and Will knows, I'm like a tall, skinny guy. I have sinewy arms. <laughs> you Definitely a Chinese medicine person is going to be like, that guy looks like a tree root. But what that means is the element is ruled or governed by a certain organ. And my body is ruled and governed by my liver and gallbladder. That's the wood, the green, the growth. I'm a guy that you give him a job, I'll get it done. I'm, I grow. Whereas if you're like a metal element, a metal element has the nice square jaw, like Will's got a nice square face. Look, he's very smart. The way his head and his jawline is, they would say he has a kingly manner. He's the metal. He likes things organized, but he's very intuitive. So he can read you very easily without you even talk to him. So he's like, I'm organized. I like this. He can build muscle well, but he has a time in his life where he can be a little too over-organized or he can be a little bit, he can actually get too run by his schedule and mm -hmm. things can actually aggravate him if things don't go in sequence to him. Yeah. That's the element type. So, so you're, calling you're calling me out. You're calling me out. I love it. Man. Do you know what Enneagram you are? Their personality? Um, some, I've had a lot of people argue for me. I, they say I train by a nine, like a nine one, because okay. I do get perfectionist. Like I'm yeah. a, I'm a, I love being the, like, you know, I have a lot of friends, but some people said I had a four um, and because uh, in five, because I'm, I, I play some guitar in a flamenco band. And so like I have an artistic side and I do, we do what we do. We love to create stuff mm -hmm. and I'm an investigator. So I don't know which one, but you, those two. You need to find out and circle back, but I love that you knew what it was, but um, yeah, yeah. that's so cool. What is your favorite place that let's go over, over fit restaurants what yeah. is your favorite restaurant in the world and when you're there what do you order oh man i mean wow okay uh okay there's well it's, okay i know you think it's gonna be like but i'm serious there's a there's one here in nashville i really love i'm sorry it's called lachlan table and Lachlan Table is my favorite restaurant because when I go there, I'll get their sirloin steak or their, their the steak they have. And they do that and they always have like these potatoes, like these, I don't know how they do it, but it's their, I know it's bad food combination, but I'm telling you, their steak and their potatoes, that's probably one of my favorites. Man, I got to, but there was one time, I can't remember the name, brother, I should have remembered, in Italy, I got this white lasagna <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> I ate it guys. And I literally, I stopped eating it. And I looked and I said, like, this is the best lasagna I've ever had. And, and the guy, and they're like, no, there's plenty. I was like, no, literally it was on the, it was an alleyway in Rome, right near the Coliseum. And it was just a little Italian restaurant that and the Blockland table are my two favorite things. I, I always remember that. that. Like nothing beats it. I love mm -hmm. that, man. It's a great, great answer. My friend, where do people go? I love talking to you. I'll see you soon when I'm down there. What is, yes, what, where do people go? Where do people go to learn about all the things you're doing? Guys, uh, just check me out. Uh, Instagram, I'm at Dr. Motley. It's all spelled out. Dr. Motley. Facebook at Dr. Motley. My website is drmotley.com. Um, I do just do my best to try to get Instagram going whenever between patients. Um, and then I do a lot of some membership work to help with people that are like health coaches to see if I can help health coaches with their clients. Uh, but that's all on the website and on the membership and on TikTok. I, it said Dr. Motley. So um, I need to get better at that. But that's where you find me, guys. Um, you can shoot me a message. I try to get back to you as soon as I can, though. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it.